My mother, she comes from a very tiny country called Luxembourg. My dad uh, grew up in northeastern Poland, but my dad uh, came to this country, I think, in 1911. He was sent to this country by his mother because he was fighting with his stepfather. His father died when he was three years old. And he, he came from a large family and had, he had several older brothers. And uh, there was a big disagreement as to how the farm should be run between my dad, who was then a, a teenager, uh, let's say about 16, 17, 18, somewhere around there. But my dad worked at a series of labor jobs as a lot of people did. And then he worked, he said he worked on the railroad. He was worked in the coal mines and he traveled around a lot. So I, tracing his history, he spent time in New Jersey, spent time in the state of New York. And when he joined the U.S. Army for World War I, he enlisted in Ohio. And he's listed under military men from Ohio when you, you know, do some searching. And uh, on his discharge papers, it says he, he gets, his, he's authorized to get train fare to return to Bel Air, Ohio. Well, this was Eastern Ohio, you know, in the coal country. Um, so he, uh, he, he served in uh, Company E, the 61st Infantry, which was part of the 5th Division. And the, the division, uh, the 5th Division symbol was a red diamond. And he served uh, in some battles in 1918, uh, San Mihal and uh, Meuse-Argonne battles in World War I. And he, uh, he said he was gassed uh, during, during World War I. But after the war was over, after Armistice Day, the 11th hour of the 11th month, uh, in, uh, when the war ended, uh, his unit, which was infantry, was converted into a supply battalion and they went to Luxembourg. And lo and behold, uh, they were billeting soldiers in people's houses at that time. And my mother had a younger brother, Francois, my uncle Frank, uh, who was, he, he somehow learned to speak English. Now the, the Luxembourgers, everybody there speaks at least three languages. They learn French, German, and their own language, Lützeburg, uh, in, in school. And the Luxembourg language sounds Germanic, but the Germans can't understand it. They hate the Germans <laughs> because they were invaded many, many times. Well, he, he was in Luxembourg and my uncle Frank, Francois, was about 14 years old at that time, and he learned to speak English. And uh, he eventually introduced my parents. So without Uncle Frank, I wouldn't be here. <laughs> and neither would any of my brothers or sisters. So uh, my, uh, my mother told me stories. She, she had a hope chest, and my dad says, don't worry, you know, leave that here. We'll, we'll take care of everything when we get to your country. And she, she told me stories of, of washing clothes down at the river, pounding, pounding the sheets and stuff, the bed sheets uh, on the stones in the, in the river and using the river water to wash their laundry. And then at age 12, she went to work in a woolen mill. And then later, uh, she went to work in a steel mill because at that time, Luxembourg had a lot of heavy industry. And uh, my dad liked to kid her that she was making the hand grenades that the Germans were throwing at him when he was in the U.S. Army. I don't know if that has any truth to it or not, but he liked to pull her chain. Uh, but they met and they got married in, on June 4th of 1919. And then later that summer, uh, my mother was uh, granted a, a passport to come to this country and they left Brest, France. Uh, to arrive in this country. Now, I don't know exactly where they went, but eventually they fairly quickly came to Detroit and they had their first child. Uh, I am named after him and my, my mother's youngest brother, who is also Marcel. My oldest brother was born in 1920 and he lived only eight years. In 1921, my next brother, who I call my oldest brother because he was the oldest surviving sibling, Joe, who was named after my paternal grandfather. And uh, my dad went to work for Ford Motor Company, strangely enough. <laughs> and he worked in the Highland Park plant building Model Ts, helping to build Model Ts. And then in 1926, after uh, 
my two sisters, Marie Antoinette and Lucille Catherine. My mother's name was Catherine, my dad's name was Anthony. And Anthony Jr. came along in 1926. So at that point, they had had five children. And uh, they moved to Dearborn to uh, a house on what was then called Verner Street, present day Graham Street, which is, runs between Lanyo and Wyoming, right near Warren Avenue, not too far from Warren Avenue. And uh, back then, uh, people rode the bus or the streetcar to get to work or they walked. Not everybody had a car, but my dad have, did have a Model T. And uh, they decided to raise their children as Americans. So even though my dad spoke Polish and he learned English and he learned to read and write English after a fashion, not terribly grammatically, but he made himself understood. And my mother could speak German, French, Luxembourg. She learned Polish and she learned English, so she could speak five languages. And uh, she understood Yiddish as well, because that came in handy when bargaining for at some furniture stores and stuff. When the, uh, when the salesman and the owner would be talking in Yiddish, uh, she understood them and, uh, and cut some pretty good deals bargaining. My mother was a real bargainer. She would bargain for anything. My mother was told it had some problems with her female organs and had uh, surgery done, and she was told by the doctor, you can't have any more children. And lo and behold, who comes along but me? <laughs> 14 years after their last child. So there was a 14 year gap between me and the rest of my siblings who were all just a year or two apart. They bought a house on Jonathan Street, and that's where I grew up. My dad had such a green thumb, we always had a garden. We had, back in East Dearborn back then, there were vacant lots in the neighborhoods and he would have this, he would pay the money to the city to bring a tractor to plow that field and, and he would seed that whole field with various vegetables. We had several fruit trees in the backyard during World War II. We had a chicken coop in half of our garage. My dad was a laborer, had no little formal education, but he was amazingly talented with his hands. He could do almost anything. Uh, as a result, between him and my brothers, uh, I have rarely had to call an electrician or a plumber or a carpenter to do anything around my house because I learned from them and that's why I have Poltoric University. The family uh, passed on a lot of knowledge to me. My dad was working, uh, by this time, had been working for the city of Dearborn in the parks department. In fact, uh, he installed all the original playground equipment at Camp Dearborn. Well, my dad was very proud of his military service. He marched in the Dearborn Memorial Day Parade. Uh, that was religious for him. So that's how it all started. Um, my, my uncle Frank uh, introduced my mom and dad in Luxembourg. 